All right. I want to call to order this meeting of the Carver Board of Selectmen for December 19th, 2017, uh, starting at 7.01. Uh, this meeting is being cablecast by Area 58 Community Access Media, Channel 15. Also, there are several openings on several committees. Please refer to the Board of Selectmen page on our website for listing and application. All right, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clark will do the honors for the community prayer. Almighty God, humbly we pray your blessing as we concern our life with the opportunity to serve our community. Enhance us with your spirit of dignity and selflessness. May we become instruments of support and understanding as we seek to bring an environment of trust and purpose among all who provide the many services that make us all that we can become. Help us achieve the goals of our commitment in this office that is now our responsibility. And especially, we lift our prayers for all the citizens of our community that we have been allowed to serve, that they may discover the fullness and joy of life that we all seek. And keep those serving in our armed forces and our first responders in our hearts and thoughts. Amen. 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 All right, now we'll go to public participation. This is a time we set aside at the beginning of the meeting for any citizens of cover that want to address the board on something that's either on the agenda or not on the agenda uh, to come on up and talk to us. We do ask that you keep your comments to about three minutes so many people have a chance to talk. Do we have any takers? Going once, twice. All right, we're moving on. Uh, first order of business, um, the Girl Scouts have been doing a great job and uh, we're going to hear uh, tonight we're going to be recognizing five of them, five of them in, for two different projects. One is for the animal holding facility and the other is teaching a life skill class. <coughs> so we're going to start off, could I have uh, Rebecca Dion if she's here? Because I know one of the young ladies is in Florida. Uh, Lauren Todd. And so, sit, sit down. You're going to explain to us what oh, you did. Have a seat. <laughs> and Violet Perkins. Oh, no, I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> Violet, you're going to need to help me because you were the one that said you remembered the speech. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, introduce yourselves if you can speak into the microphone so the folks at home can see you because our Nielsen ratings are really high. And. Uh, <laughs> So tell us a little bit of what you did. So talk into the microphone. So talk into the microphone. Pull it real close. Okay, I'll go first. Hi, I'm Lauren. You can move the microphone close to you so you don't have to lean. Okay, here, go. Hi, I'm Violet. And I'm Lauren. And uh, we were working on our Silver Award project to um, help the animal control officers in town. We're over there. They're over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what we have done is we have alerted town citizens on how, uh, how we helped the animals of Carver, uh, like, and how you can help your own pet stay safe. And we also improved the town's uh, animal holding shelter, because we don't have a real shelter, but it's temporary, so that they don't have to go to like, uh, um, another shelter, so you don't have to travel outside of Carver to get your animals. And we renovated that so that it would be a good place to stay if your animals did happen to, uh, if they did happen to get lost or run away or any of that. Um, so, um, um, we started um, cleaning the holding rooms in the ju in June, I think. Yeah, it was in June. <laughs> um, and we finished um, with with it in um, November. Um, first, we cleaned in June, and then um, in July, August, um, we painted. And September, um, we um, also painted. And in October, we also painted. <laughs> <laughs> We did a lot of painting. A lot of painting on this one. <laughs> um, and in November, we brought in some new furniture and organized mm -hmm. a lot. And um, 
there's already been three animals there. Uh, we'd also like to thank the great uh, people of our town that had uh, that helped us along the way on this project. Um, they helped us a lot because um, we have donation boxes set up in the town hall and the library. And everyone that donated there, we got so many donations and we would like to thank you so much because that's really what helped the animal shelter grow into what it is. Um, Without the donations, we wouldn't have had a lot of stuff to renovate it with. Uh, but if you go in there, it looks uh, it looked really nice. And we had our grand opening in November, and everyone was just like, whoa. Because they looked at the before pictures and the after pictures, and they're like, wow. And we were like, yeah, this is what you guys did, because you guys took the time to donate the stuff. And um, even if it was like older things or new things, they both uh, both helped to uh, make the shelter what it is, and we would like to thank you all for that. Outstanding. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, great job. Um, we would also like to thank um, Avashan, um, Restore, TJ Maxx, and Lowe's um, for donating paint and furniture to um, the shelter and we would also like to thank the library and town hall for letting us put donation boxes there we um, also went to several events um, in which um, we made pet toys and got donations um, we also brought a trifold that me, Becca, and Lauren um, put together. Becca. Um, and we brought that there. And um, we went to Old Home Day and National Night Out for um, that. Okay, and then we also, we, we did a lot. <laughs> we also tell. went to um, the library and we went to a few daycares to read stories to the children about animals and we taught them a little bit about animal safety for their pets. Very cool. Very good. Great job. Anybody on the board want to start off? Mr. Clark? So uh, you said you've had three animals there so far. What kinds of animals? Um, Bug. Yeah. Three dogs? Yeah. But it, it could be cat or it could be a, cats or dogs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really like interchangeable and um, it's basically whatever we can take into the space. Because uh, uh, the animal control officers save all kinds of animals. Like uh, we went in there and they were like, we have... Like, we help so many animals, and we were like, well, we need to make it a place for all animals to stay. Excellent. Sarah. Yeah, I, I don't know how many of you have been into the new animal holding shelter, but um, I was there on that opening day, and <clears throat> there are so many paws on the walls. <laughs> they really did do a lot of painting. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the furniture is some really deluxe um, cages with little plush pillows and... It's, it's just a really nice, nice outfit, and the before-after pictures, I'm, I'm sure you could, they could, people could still see it if they got permission. Um, yeah, you girls did an awful lot. Thank you so much for that. Ellen. I just want to say how proud I am of both you girls. I've seen you grown, and I'm just really proud of what you've accomplished in your short time on planet Earth. And Lauren, I do have to say, for someone who didn't have a speech memorized, you did quite well. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Volunteering is absolutely phenomenal. David. I uh, don't have much more to say than that. I can tell you that getting up in front of uh, the entire town and explaining what you did is a very difficult task. And uh, your public speaking skills uh, were well received. Great job. I think Girl Scouts are a great organization and I'm uh, so happy that it's live and active in our town of Carver. Great job, guys. I think, I think all three of you girls that did this project really deserve this commendation. And it's not so much just so much working on the animal shelter, 
but doing so much to get the town together, going to Arbishan and businesses and getting people to donate things, making it a, a really a community event to help get this done. And that is a tremendous thing because you're not only helping you know, animals that get lost, but you're also helping build relationships in the town. And for that, you should really be congratulated. So if I could have the members of the board meet around front, we have certificates and young ladies to come up. And we want the, the animal officers to come on up. It's <laughs> back where it goes. Come on. Let's see, is it Rebecca this yeah. Yeah. Come on up, young ladies. You get to be front and center. No, 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 front and center. <laughs> front and center. <laughs> okay, we have certificates uh, from the Board of Selectmen of Recognition for Violet Perkins for her dedication and hard work for the Carver Animal Control Holding Facility. And this is given today, this in December 2017. So, for Violet. And for Lauren, for dedication and hard work uh, for the Cover Animal Control Holding Facility. And we also have one for the We're not done with the Girl Scouts yet. <laughs> if I could have Isabella Pompey come on up to the table and uh, Grace Rizzuto. And these young ladies um, developed after school life skill classes for the middle high school students. So if you could tell us a little bit of how you came up with this and the work you had to do, we'd appreciate it. Pull the mic real up close to you, folks. I'm Bella. Uh, I'm Grace. <laughs> so we came up with this project because we heard about in school, since there was going to be budget cuts, we learned that some of the, um, maybe that some of the extracurricular classes were going to be cut and that we were going to have to pay for some of the things that you stay after school for, like Best Buddies or Drama or GSA and stuff like that. So we came up with the idea to like bring classes that you don't normally learn in school and bring them after school. So the class that we did do was an interview skills class. So we had Violet's mom, who actually works at uh, JC Penny. Penny. Yeah, JC. Oh, TJ <laughs> Max as an interviewer, <laughs> and she does interviewing. So she interviews anyone who works there, like teens and stuff. So she gave a lesson on like what we should wear, should say, and like stuff with that, like questions that come up. Uh, we did have some like non Girl Scouts come to the meeting, which was like what we intended, and um, we had to like go talk to different professionals and ask them if they would be interested in like teaching a class. Um. I think we asked at Old Home Day. We saw a lot of people too. They had um. We saw a lady named Sue, and we talked to her because Anne actually knew her, and she said that she would be interested in, in, interested in teaching a knitting class. So we found any local, like, Anne also came up with the idea, and we, she came up with the idea to look for, like, any local shelters or hospitals that would need anything like blankets or, like, baby caps or anything like that. So me and Grace went online, and we were searching for any local hospitals, like, that needed anything, or hospitals and anything that wasn't local because we could always ship it out and our next class is going to be the knitting class so knitting blankets and baby caps and anything that hospitals or shelters might need outstanding uh, and we did set up like a trifold and went to the old home day in carver night out to try to like talk to people who would be interested in taking the classes or teaching one yeah we had a sign up sheet with everyone so we had a sign up sheet for anyone who wanted to sign up for the interview class and we would give them any information that they need and parents could also like sign up their kid or 
anything because if they weren't there. I think we had about five to six people at the interview class. It wasn't too much, but we weren't Obviously. expecting too much. But we still had a good time, and we did a practice interview with one of the kids that was there so to see what they kind of learned, and it was interactive, so it wasn't just a lecture, so kids still did get to learn. And yeah, that's. And we have a few classes lined up, so it's going to be one class each school term. So we did the interview class our first term, and then the second term we're doing our knitting class. And then the third term, I think we're doing a crocheting class where we're crocheting um, pot cozies and anything and like handing them out to teachers and stuff like that. So Very good. Oh, very good. Mr. Robertson, I'll lead off with you. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> um, I will tell you that the, uh, the interview skill set is uh, something that is uh, painfully lacking in uh, the world. Yeah. Uh, I used to interview many people, and so uh, getting help on uh, inter interviewing and selling your skill set to somebody uh, is admirable uh, for you to take charge of that and take the lead of it. It's a skill set you'll be doing the rest of your life, so learning very early is a very, um, you know, my... my uh, Accommodations to uh, my uh, happiness, or whatever the word I'm looking for here is, is uh, I'm very pleased to see it active. So Thanks. good job, great, yeah. great idea too, by the way. Thanks, Helen. I'm not sure either one of you will have to interview because I foresee entrepreneurial spirit <laughs> in running a company, because one of the most important um, things about either owning your own company or running a business is when you see a problem, you don't put a Band-Aid on it, you look for a solution, and you guys are so far ahead of the game, I just commend you how far advanced you are for your age. Keep Thank up you. the Thank great you. work. Sarah. Uh, yes, I, I concur with both comments. I also wanted to say that I, I really appreciate the spirit of, of giving the community <laughs> that you showed by doing this, and particularly the um, things you're making for the homeless shelters and the hospitals. Yeah, that, thank you. That means a lot to them as well, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Mr. Clark. Now, I'd agree with, uh, with everything that's been said. I, I think with Hel to Helen's point, uh, you'll have to understand the finer point of conducting an interview where you're interviewing somebody to see if you want to hire them, I think. That's I think exactly correct. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I just think it's such a great idea to introduce the idea of life skills mm -hmm. into the high school. Yeah. Uh, so that, uh, you know, it's one thing to go through the academics, but to also come away uh, and have had the opportunity to pick up some of these additional types of life skills that people are going to need once they're no longer in that academic environment. So it's just a great idea. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's great that you just didn't go to do one thing, the interview, and just say, well, okay, that's it, we yeah. did it. Yeah. You've come up with another one and another one, and hopefully you'll have, you can mentor people younger Girl Scouts that are coming up that can continue this tr tradition in the middle high school for years to come to yeah. get because I agree with everybody and especially life skills are there's so much else they're trying to teach you life skills in the high school middle high school kind of fall by the wayside a little bit yeah. and you filled in a <laughs> tremendous niche and don't feel bad that you only had five for your first class first of all I think that's great yeah. just that even had that many yeah. but as this keeps going on I think it's something that'll build and you've given it a tremendous foundation and thank you very much for your efforts so if I could have you girls come up and the board come out front <laughs> As you saw, you have to be in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For Rachel Rizzuto, for her hard work and dedication to the community by developing after school life skills classes for the middle high school students in Carver. Thank you. For Bella or Isabel? Bella. Bella. <laughs> Bill up from pay for her hard work and dedication to the community by developing after school life school classes for the middle high school students.
<laughs> Fortunately, I don't think it was picked up by the microphone. No, it, it, yeah, but I can talk loud. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, ladies. And you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and because we, we run such riveting meetings here. Right. <laughs> Although so. it's getting late, you probably have homework that you need to get home and do immediately. So, no, no, no. so. the holiday, Christmas yeah. break. So, you know, I'm trying to help them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. Yeah, you can go. You, you really. can go ahead and go. It sits. We won't feel offended. Yeah. So. <laughs> Great job. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, and thank, thank you. you so much. Chief Dupoli. Is Officer yes. Farkasen here, or is he still investigating? Oh, good. <laughs> it's all yours. Thank you. Good evening. It's uh, my pleasure to, to bring before you Jer Jeremy Farkasen for his formal swearing in. Jeremy's our newest police officer. As you guys will recall, he started the academy back in June at the Plymouth Police Academy and graduated uh, this November. From all reports, did an excellent job. Um, he's begun his field training with us now and, uh, and soon will be on his own on the road. Uh, Jeremy's lived in town for almost his entire life. He worked previously for the Cava Fire Department and the Cava EMS. His dad, as you recall, was a longtime employee of the, of the town. And uh, we look forward to him being a longtime time employee of the police department. So. Before we do his swearing in, I don't know if you guys had any comments or questions you wanted to, to ask Jeremy, but we want to bring him here for grilling. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to take the first first round? Do you want? Sure. Jeremy, I, I'm, I'm really... Jeremy, first, uh, Jeremy, move the microphone in front. That's, there you <laughs> go. I, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I just want to tell you how proud I am of you, and I Thank know you. your parents are, and your family are really, really proud. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Stay on the side, Mr. Robertson. Yeah, I uh, went to your graduation, and it was a, a remarkable uh, event for me. It's the first time I've been there, and um, I was so proud that we had a cover representation there, and you looked professional, and uh, I was very, very pleased uh, to you. be there. So it's nice to meet you, too, you, by the you way. You, too. <laughs> Helen. Alan. Jeremy, I just want to say congratulations, but more importantly, thank you for wanting to serve this town. Thank you. Wish you the best. Thank you very much. Mr. Clark. Uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to be on the interview committee. Yes. Uh, and um, I can attest to uh, anyone that's familiar with our administrative sergeant knows the type of <laughs> detailed background that is involved. And uh, anyone that can survive that vetting um, <laughs> certainly is uh, above board. But no. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to participate in, in, in these, this interview process because you have an opportunity to ask the types of questions in, in an intimate atmosphere that really helps you get some insight into the individuals. And uh, certainly I was, uh, knowing, knowing your parents, um, I could make some assumptions as to your character uh, since they're two of the best people I know. Uh, but uh, at the same time, the way you performed under the pressure, because it is, it is some pressure to sit there with the interview, and the, an the answers you had to the questions uh, really cemented in my mind the idea that you were uh, someone that I would want uh, protecting me in, in Carver. So thank you. thank you for being willing to step forward, and I'm looking forward to having you on the force. Thank you very much. All right. My turn. <laughs> And no, I won't put you on the spot. Uh, first off, congratulations you. on your progress so far, making it through the academy, not an easy task. Also making it through, as Ron said, the interview process. I've heard enough horror stories on how those go, so <laughs> congratulations. It's always kind of special for me, especially being a member of the board now, seeing people that I've watched grow up in this town. I mean, I've known you for... A long time, all through the fire department. I think I was one of your instructors yes, in recruit, right. recruit training on the fire department. Uh, known your dad, <laughs> uh, mom, for a real long time. And it's good to see someone that raised in Carver that wants to go ahead and serve Carver. Because being a police officer, you are serving all the citizens of Carver. And it's, it's, it's a hard job. But you're up for the challenge. I knew you're, know you're going to do a fantastic job. And I just want to thank you for 
stepping up and taking that responsibility and putting yourself out there to be one of our officers, one, a part of the finest police department of any town in Massachusetts. And I know you'll do yourself, the town, and your parents, and all your friends and relatives real proud. And thank you for joining. Thank you very much. So I guess we'll bring up the clown town clerk. Clown? Did you say the Did you say the clown clerk? <laughs> I'm never going to live this down. <laughs> A thousand pardons. You will not. Wow. Wow. And I, uh, <laughs> I've, oh, I've goofed, God. but I've never yeah, made that one. Put that in the paper. I'm so tired. I might have a cup. <laughs> I, I'm more tired than that, as you can tell. Maybe you could stand with the clown clerk. Uh, <laughs> Well, that just assured I'm not running again. So we do have uh, cake and refreshments next door if anybody wants some. Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh, okay. Great, thanks. Do I want them? Uh, no, I'm good. I got coffee, thanks. Where are you going? Do you want water? Uh, no, I'm all set. Thank you. Hmm? And do you notice that this time we're getting through people, the stuff for people there to hear, so we're not making them sit through the whole thing? All right. Having been sitting very patiently there in the front row, uh, we have an appointment. Um, Mr. Hoffman, would you mind if we let Miss Hamilton go first? Okay, uh, Haley Ann Hamilton, uh, who's Harley. Harley. I told you, I'm tired. I'm sorry. Um, for uh, looking for an appointment request for the Agricultural Commission. So, Harley? If you want to speak in the microphone, give us your name that, so I can butcher it again. <laughs> Hello, I am Harley Ann Hamilton. <laughs> and? Okay, I didn't know if you had a question. No, no, you can keep on going. You're doing good. Uh, so I was looking to be appointed to the Agricultural Commission. I have been attending the meetings as a guest for over eight months now. And I believe that I had a lot to offer to the group that is already appointed in those positions. As I travel the country, and now I can say that I've traveled to other countries as well, and learned about our culture, our practices in our town and around our country and our world. And I believe that with that, I can bring in new ideas for our town and our community. Excellent. Great. Right. Perfect. Ms. Ewan. Yes, I just want to say if anyone deserves this appointment, it's Harley Ann, Miss, Miss Agriculture in Massachusetts. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. How about that, huh? Oh, <laughs> Anybody else? No, no other, other than yeah. just, I just think uh, her qualifications you know, speak, speak for, for themselves. themselves. So we're lucky to have, that you have this interest. So thank yeah. you. 
I want to thank you for coming forward. It's awful hard for us to get people to go ahead and volunteer to fill these different boards uh, that we have. And I think it's tremendous that you're stepping forward. So given that, I will take a motion, entertain a motion. So, so moved. Second. We have a motion seconded. Any further discussion? Well, just to say that uh, it, it, you're also joining a great commission. There's some great people on the Ag Commission. And yeah, they're amazing people. And yeah. they took me in right away and taught me how everything is running in the town. And then we were able to work well together on new things that were happening at the farmer's market and other things that we want to start in the coming year. That's terrific. That's good to hear. Yeah. Very good. So, that being said, all those in favor of appointing Harley Ann to the Agricultural Commission, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Ayes have it. Four, uh, five zero. Unanimous. Welcome aboard. Welcome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thanks for Thank volunteering. You, That's great. And as I told the Girl Scouts and the police officers, you know, if you want to stay for the whole meeting, that's fine. I mean, I'm sure Mr. Hoffman would really like the audience. <laughs> All right, moving on. Mr. Hoffman for the Recreation Commission uh, Committee. How are you doing tonight, Jim? Good, how are you? Hello, Good. James. <clears throat> Name and what you're applying for, please. Uh, Jim Hoffman for... Great Meadow Drive, Carver. I am applying for the appointment for the Recreation Committee, one of the openings that's, that's on there. Um, for those that don't know, I've been in the town for 27 years now. Mm -hmm. Three children. Uh, one, the youngest one is in fifth grade. So going through all the town sports and all that fun stuff. And noticed that there was a couple openings on the Recreation Committee. Um, I was on the Recreation Committee probably 15 years ago. I know it's important to the town, especially now that we're growing and just saw the need to uh, have some, some free time now. So <laughs> I figured I would uh, <laughs> um, just go for that appointment. Comments for the questions from the board? Do you want to first slide? Yeah. Anybody else first? Uh, I was just going to say, we, we had um, uh, some folks in from the high school uh, <coughs> that uh, they're, they're trying to take the recreation committee to a new level. I think you're probably familiar with, right. with, with that yep. and so forth. So it's, it's good to get someone of your caliber yep. interested that would be willing to participate and help address that because as the complexes go in over at the new elementary school and as we redo the high school complex and so forth, the need to have a recreation committee that can help oversee utilization uh, and care and maintenance of those facilities in conjunction with the, what the town does is going to be very important So because right. it's going to be a multi-million dollar investment in all of that. Yeah, that was one of the things that attracted me to it as well, because I know in the next few mm -hmm. years it's going to be quite different than mm -hmm. what it is now. Sarah. <laughs> well, again, I'm going to uh, highly recommend Jim Hoffman for this position. Jim was, a um, long time ago, was on our Open Space and Recreation Plan Committee where we wrote the, first, the town's first one in many, many years. Um, and he brought a lot to the table doing that. Um, and then with your experience on planning board, um, I just think that you're going to be a great asset. Thanks for stepping up, Jim. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you, Jim. I was just ready to make the motion 10 minutes ago because <laughs> you, are, like, uh, you are phenomenal. So I just know you'll do great things on the Recreation Committee. David. I don't know you, but I like you already because you bought it. <laughs> I just, uh, I think the world of the board, and if they have such praise for you, I, uh, I can't think that you would just be an outstanding uh, addition to whatever we have. Thank Thanks for doing that. Okay, we're not going to hold it against you that you're a relative newcomer to the town of Carver in 27 <laughs> years, <Yeah>. but <laughs> you've done some great stuff in town, and like Helen was saying, on the planning board, Sarah, um, said, or Sarah that. said that. <laughs> Make a motion to approve. <laughs> second. Motion has been made and second to appoint Jim Hoffman to the uh, Recreation Committee. So Any we'll further discussion? Yep. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Zero. 
Aye, aye. Unanimous. And again, Jim, you're welcome to stay for the balance of the morning. <laughs> if you'd like to, I have some homework to do. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can go ahead and stay and see how many more times I goof up between now and the end of the oh, meeting. Oh, no, I think you before, before I go ahead and give it over to the vice you chair. Can't, I think you've already, I, you've you've already, that's, already that's, oh, yeah. that's a whopper. You've already peaked. You've peaked. <laughs> Jim, just FYI, our next meeting for the sports complex of the middle high school is going to be next Thursday starting at 6 p.m. Um, you're more than welcome to come, and um, it'll kind of give a highlight of what that project is. Okay, good. I'll see you then. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you again, oh, and thank, thank you for stepping Christmas forward on this. Yeah. Nice Merry to meet Christmas. you, Jim. All right. Um, we, are we going to, to go on with the next appointment without the yes. individuals being here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I have to apologize because I should have I told Bill Duggan um, to attend, and I didn't, so... Well, I'll make the motion to approve John Carter and Bill Duggan to the Carver Marion Wareham Regional Refuse District. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, motion made and seconded. Discussion, Mr. Clark. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, I think we've had discussions in the past about concerns we have with the uh, uh, mm -hmm. Refuse District. We have uh, Dave Robertson serving on, on the committee already. We had two resignations. I think uh, with John Carter and Bill Duggan coming in from the <laughs> Finance Committee, uh, and with their background on finance, I think that's exactly the type of uh, uh, individuals we need to help bird dog that, mm -hmm. uh, that commission. So I, uh, I feel very strongly they'll do a great job in conjunction with Dave. And a long time ago, Bill Duggan was the chair of the town's recycling committee when it existed. Oh, I, he didn't even mention that. Yeah, modest. <laughs> there he is. Excellent. David, anything? I'll wait to finish swallowing. Oh, no, I'm, it's a pleasure to not, you know, um, make the motion because John and Bill are two more phenomenal Carver residents. And, again, thanking them for stepping forward. Uh, I have to agree with Mr. Clark. Um, we've had some questions about how that's all going, and I think it's important for us to have full representation of the town on that um, district committee um, also with the financial background of both of them from the finance committee I think they can help clear up or at least help us understand more some of our questions and get answers to what we're looking for mr. Milanowski I would just echo that uh, they are the uh, the regional refuge district is a is a governmental body to body politic and they have to follow the same financial rules regulations that we do with the Department of Revenue uh, so one of the things that we are, you know, working on trying to get as part of our investigation is all of the, um, or trying to find copies of their previous audits and other financial records so that we can go through and do a <coughs> analysis. And I think the team that we, you've appointed or soon to appoint with Dave and the others will help us get to some full clarity on uh, this organization. All right, seeing nobody else rushing to the microphones. We have a motion. motion and second. So all those in favor appointing John Carter and Bill Duggan to the Carver Marion Wareham Regional Refuse District, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, aye. Opposed? Zero. Five zero. And now, wow, are we really that far ahead? Don't goof up. Moving on to the town administrator update, and just because we're ahead of schedule doesn't give you extra time. What was that, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> Move on. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, uh, the staff and all the department heads have been uh, working uh, pretty aggressively on um, putting together our operational budget. Um, and this, in essence, will complete step two of our four-step budget process. Uh, step three puts it over into the finance department, uh, our finance committee, will they, where they will again begin reviewing and interviewing the department heads um, and coming back to the board of selectmen with their recommendations after doing some additional uh, review of everything. I have emailed the chairman of the finance committee and he is going to start moving forward uh, with putting that together. Um, what we have in front of you, and it is in your email, is this is the summary budget that we put together for town meeting uh, on the front and back page of this. Uh, this includes a balanced budget uh, that provides the same level of services 
that were provided this previous year and in some instances uh, we were able to do uh, some additional items in different departments. Uh, as you go through here, um, again, this is a balanced budget. It does include um, everything that's necessary to run the town. There were no staff layoffs included in here. Um, there also were are new, no new positions added as well. So this is with the same headcount that we have in 2018 as is what is recommended for 2019. Now again, this is a recommendation from myself and from the different department heads. At the end of the day, it's up to the Board of Selectmen uh, with advice from the Finance Committee for you to um, choose whether to accept the figures that are in front of you or to modify those and bring those to town meeting for town meeting's uh, final approval. Um, built into here, uh, we do have a cost of living increase for the employees. Um, again, going back to our uh, charts that we've done before in comparing the different uh, departments, I'm sorry, the different bargaining units um, as to who has received uh, cost of living increases. We were able to build that into the budget as well this year, uh, which is will be the second year in a row after missing two, four, six, eight, after going nine years with no cost of living increase. Now this will be the second year that we've been able to do that. Um, other than that, uh, there's really nothing um, out of the ordinary here um, at all. So I think it's, uh, it's continuing to move forward and uh, refine uh, some of the changes that have happened to the town over the last uh, few years so we can have a sustainable uh, budget going forward and provide the level of services that we can afford. So we don't need to vote on this. You do not need to vote on this tonight. Uh, this is just being released now and uh, re will be released to the Finance Committee tomorrow uh, for them and for you to have uh, your budget meetings. Now, last year, uh, as part of the budget meeting process, um, you chose to have a few of the department heads come in in your January and February meeting, and we kind of you know, gave everybody about 10 minutes to provide an update on their budget and have the departments talk to you. Um, that seemed to go pretty well last year mm -hmm. and it also puts it in front of the camera so that mm -hmm. there's full transparency with the public. I would probably recommend that you go mm -hmm. in that direction unless the board chooses to go in a different direction. And then also the Capital Outlay Committee is going to begin their review too of the Capital Outlay Plan that I was presented to you back in November. I thought that worked out very well last year. I would think we would want to do that again, have the, uh, the different department heads come before us on that. Yes, Mr. Clark. Yeah, I was going to say the, the alternative of, of what we've done in the past is to select a, a Saturday in February and try to do everything in one day. I think it actually works out better to uh, do it during the course of our meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know anybody that's going to sit down and slug their way at home watching mm -hmm. you know, a whole day's worth of meetings, whereas uh, they can tune in and just uh, catch mm -hmm. those. Uh, and so if we take a, the major departments and have them come in as we go through our meetings in January and February, I think that makes, that makes sense. I did have um, a couple of questions. Uh, you, you said capital outlays already gotten their release so they can begin their work on looking at the capital program. Um, Obviously, the state of Massachusetts is going to finalize the budget for this fiscal year sometime next July. Mm -hmm. So uh, what type of crystal ball are we working off of here? What, how, what kind of hedge do you have built in here um, in terms of guessing what our final numbers are going to be? I know historically, the last couple of years, we haven't been very far off at all when we're making a guess this far ahead. But mm -hmm. just curious as to what your level <coughs> of confidence is that the numbers were the, the, re, the relief we're anticipating in the way of state aid is accurate okay. uh, so what I passed out today would be our operating budget and built into the operating budget um, there, there is nothing additional incorporated into here because this would just be the department uh, review but when we did our budget forecast um, this was worked on by both um, the superintendent <coughs> the school business manager finance director and myself and in here, we did do a, a pretty aggressive review of um, what we believe the state finances uh, were or are going to be. Earlier this year, the state finances were down in collection. Now they're up. And whether that's tied, you know, to this bubble we're having in, this, in the stock market is, is yet to be determined what the final numbers will be at the end of the year. However, 
it's important to note that this year's operating budget for the state actually wasn't technically balanced <coughs> a couple hundred thousand dollars in deficit because there were some funding that they were allocating as revenue coming in which the federal government was going to cancel so they knew the money was not going to come in but it hadn't been canceled yet so even if the state comes in with some additional revenue we do not anticipate that that's going to affect the budget at all uh, significantly and that also ties into the fact that um, that although we do receive a, a decent amount of state aid um, also that state aid is actually um, there's a lot of offsets that are incorporated into that as well so uh, to answer your question um, this past year when we did the budget we a little bit we over forecast for some of the state revenue it actually came in lower but we were able to balance that off with some additional um, other increased permits so we were able to net zero if you will um, and, and I think uh, this year we'll be heading in that same direction so if there's a change you would expect it might be a positive change you think we're uh, if we're er if we're making an error it's probably on the side of caution what we put together I, I would say so yes and if there is a change I would expect it to have a very minimal impact okay. less than a fraction of a fraction of a percent good thank you anybody else um, do you I have a couple things that kind of jumped out to me on this do you want me to ask them now or at, an, at a future meeting whatever you'd like <laughs> All right. I just noticed a couple, a couple of spots um, and what just needs a little clarification mm -hmm. uh, one is on um, police uh, salaries mm -hmm. that you're running uh, about 17 thousand less than the requested is there a rationale on that uh, yes uh, the chief and I did meet on this and the uh, uh, revised number is an updated number he gave me after we went through and did some additional calculations uh, we do have one officer that um, is going to have to retire at the end of this calendar year uh, due to his age and uh, therefore that's going to come in at a lower salary when that person is rehired that's really where you're seeing most of the change okay so he's not going to be shocked when he sees this the chief is not no these are the chief's revised numbers okay I, I'm wanting to make sure yep. and the other one that kind of jumped out at me was uh, uh, council on aging operating yes uh, uh, you're looking at about 8,000 less than requested yes uh, that actually <coughs> ties into meals on wheels um, we've actually have a surplus in that account and um, how do I say this um, there's much more scrutiny on food being served versus being taken out of the building in cases and therefore um, there is not a there's not much of a need anymore to supplement uh, missing food that uh, relates to a year. problem we had a while ago mm -hmm. that, that was corrected correct. yes okay so that's where okay thank you I just want to make sure that the you know the no I was director there was happy with that you know you did very well <laughs> whoa Tis the season. hey I'm just messing up Boy, words I'm not taking shots season. Boy. all right um, anything else on the budget uh, I do not believe so no all right uh, I will also say that uh, we spent a lot of time really making sure that it's it's very transparent how it's put together and um, and, and we're pretty proud of it okay Moving capital building project updates. Uh, yes. Um, so, <coughs> in the process of winding down the middle high school project, uh, that's currently in its final punch list uh, and just going through making sure that the town has all of the warranties and certifications that we have paid for. The elementary school continues to be ahead of schedule and under budget. And as part of that, uh, we are looking at uh, doing some modifications to our IT technology so that we can move um, the townwide technology for the schools in the town as part of our centralized IT department all over to the elementary school so that that becomes our hub coming out of there. Uh, so we're moving forward um, in that direction. Uh, as it relates to the high school sports complex, uh, our next meeting is next Thursday at 6 p.m. Um, they have gone forward and are making some additional modifications to the plans um, so that we can reduce down the overall cost and they will have their geotechnical work completed 
Um, so that I think after that meeting, which is actually followed by a CPC meeting, uh, I think on next Thursday we will have a really good solid handle on the project at that point. And, and before you move on, I would uh, encourage people, it's uh, broadcast over Area 58, or to come to the meetings. I've attended a couple of them. Um, even though you don't end up on the, it's not on, generally on the agenda for public comment. Um, every The meetings I've gone to, um, members of the audience who have been sitting through the meetings are invited to talk. Um, I realize there's a lot of trimming and re uh, making new priorities to reduce the number, so that's why I haven't gotten too excited about it yet. Um, but as you get closer to a, a agreed upon, fi quote, final cost, if it's still too high, I, 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 I do have some concerns. So I look forward to the next meeting and seeing how those costs have been hopefully consolidated and down a little bit, but we'll wait and see what happens at the meeting. Mm -hmm. But I do encourage the citizens, because this is, it is going to be a very important project, um, not only for now, but for 10, 15, 20, 25 years down the road, because anybody that's used that facility or gone to a football game or a soccer game or a field hockey game or to the track the track's not safe for the students. The football field, because of the drought a couple of years ago, is in terrible shape. Um, so this is, a, this is an important project that's coming up. Sorry to have interrupted, but continue. What, and when's the next meeting for that? It'll be next Thursday, Thursday. at 6 p.m. Here. This, here in this room, and then CPC will be at 7. Oh, six. It's be tough. And it will be on Area 58, so anyone can watch it. So uh, staying ahead of schedule, <laughs> way to go. <clears throat> uh, the Council on Aging um, uh, um, in the uh, COA Community Center, uh, we're still working with uh, forming a committee with Carol. And uh, my intention is that uh, after the first of the year, we will uh, move forward with having the COA um, committee uh, hold a public hearing and try to gather some comments from the public on the plan that they have proposed um, or any other plans that are options that are out there. Um, so we'll be moving forward with that. And then also uh, the Chief Doofley and I are, are moving forward with the police strategic plan. Uh, there's still some revisions that uh, the consultants are doing to the plan and, and trying to put together a list of comparable communities so they can come out and do some comparison um, to, to what we're looking to do. Um, when that plan comes out, again, I think we've, we've talked many times that uh, we still need to add a couple people to the police force um, over time. That, that's not going to happen this year, but uh, we need to figure out in the future how to add some additional positions. And um, again, we're looking at, at the future as to, to how public safety continues to be served in the town. So uh, that is moving along well also. Do we have a time frame of when we might see a preliminary? We'd like in February, March? Sure. So uh, I, I'm anticipating that we will have, um, it, hopefully by the end of January, we'll have a, the report available uh, and, and some type of a presentation from the chief and I and, and or the consultants on what they have found and uh, what some of their recommendations are. Um, if that can happen sooner, it will. Um, but... Um, you know, we want to use that as a basis so that we can start to quantify uh, what an appropriate cost would be for a facility that uh, if, if the planets align, we can move that forward to annual town meeting as well as the COA center, as well as the high school sports uh, complex. There is an advantage of um, putting together a larger bond than putting together smaller bonds. There's a lot of administrative cost that goes into issuing bonds. So when we can combine these, it actually saves the town a significant amount of money in the, in the future. Mr. Clark, remembering that we're ahead of schedule, you want to stay that way. I, I just want to, <laughs> I wanted to suggest that uh, I realize it might be a financial issue, but if we can have the consultants present for the presentation, um, I think that there'd be a value in having them, mm -hmm. since it's their report, yep. uh, be here as part of the presentation. That's, that's right. I think, I think we're all pretty much in yeah. agreement on that. <clears throat> so, good point. I'm done. I think many of you met them with the, when they had their charrette, mm -hmm. their uh, SWAT meeting. Yes. SWAT meeting. What'd you call it? SWAT meeting. No, first, that's not what you said. Oh, I said charrette. 
Yeah. That's another type of group meeting. <laughs> Moving on. Anything else, sir? <laughs> Municipal group meeting. I'll go there. Mr. Melanowski, anything else? <laughs> um, the answer is no. No. Uh, we move on to select rooms portion of the meeting. See, I knew that he had something else. We are doing just perfect. I have nothing else to update you on. <laughs> Very good. Selectman's update. We're going to start off. We're going to go from right to left. So, Mr. Robertson. Uh, I don't have anything uh, specific, but it is the uh, holiday season. And um, I would uh, suggest uh, that if you know somebody who <coughs> is in the service, uh, their home uh, is uh, either out at sea or at a camp somewhere uh, and a friendly uh, card or note from anybody in the town uh, is um, very much appreciated. So uh, just think of the first responders during this time and uh, the people that are protecting us. Merry Christmas. Sarah. Thank you. I just um, wanted to again let people know how much how important the Girl Scouts are how many of them there are in Carver we have a huge number of Girl Scouts and every time I drive by the triangle especially mm -hmm. this time of year um, they're always doing something to that triangle they're planting flowers in the spring or they're decorating it at Christmas and um, I know we have a new slide at the playground because of a Girl Scout silver project Amazing. Um, they really are they really are and I also wanted to um, mention just because I'm not sure that everybody knows or remembers, not you guys, but maybe in the general public there might be some people who don't um, remember or realize that the Community Preservation Act funds are funding the ball fields and playground at the elementary school and hopefully will be funding the ones at the high school, um, at least in part. Is that correct, Michael, or is it going to be the whole thing? Uh, it's yet to be determined. Okay. But hopefully we'll be able to use uh, Community Preservation Act money for that as well. So I, I've been approached by a few people who were concerned, oh, is our taxes going to go up because of that? And I said, well, not for the elementary school, um, because we did get that funding. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully not for the middle high school. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Ellen. I just want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah. And have a safe and happy holiday. <clears throat> Mr. Clark. The only thing I'd add is uh, for those of you that uh, search for the Selectman's meetings on your TV, um, you can also on your computer go to Area 58. And uh, a day or two after the Selectman's meeting, the uh, meetings are uh, online. And uh, one advantage to that is that if there's a couple of particular areas you want to skip to, you can just go right to those, watch those, and don't have to sit through the uh, entire meeting unless you choose to. <laughs> Uh, are they also but, uh, on YouTube? Pardon me? Aren't they also on YouTube? Well, they're, they're transferred. Uh, the, the, the link is to YouTube. Okay. But if you go to Area 58, you'll find it for the planning board, the school committee, the uh, board of selectmen. Uh, it's a faster, quicker way to, instead of waiting for the meeting to show up on uh, regular uh, TV. Uh, and other than that, yeah, just uh, I believe we're at the sixth night of Hanukkah. So to our Jewish friends, uh, we wish them a happy Hanukkah and a Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, coming up in uh, just uh, next Monday, so the best to everyone. Just following up on Area 58, uh, I think as most of you know, I did a cable show. Into the microphone, please. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was mic'd at that time. Uh, two weeks ago, I did a uh, cable show um, that uh, should be airing shortly on just kind of a state of the town in some of the op where the budget issues are. So uh, I was interviewed for a grueling hour. <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, we'll bring some light and shed some light on some of the inner workings of the town. That's Have great. we gotten any word when that's going to start airing? We'd have to talk to the uh, person on the board. I'll find out. out. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to reiterate what Sarah said and Helen about not only the Girl Scouts, but the Boy Scouts. They, both of those organizations do a lot of work for this town. The Boy Scouts, we always have them coming forward uh, for their Eagle Scout projects. They do some tremendous work, and the girls, as you've witnessed tonight, yeah. are doing a tremendous job. So we're very fortunate yeah. to have very dedicated leaders that are leading these young men and women as they go forward. Um, and I think the town is lucky to have them. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to keep that in mind. Also, holiday season, those who celebrate, happy Hanukkah. 
Um, I think that ends on the 20th, um, which would be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And for everybody else, a very Merry Christmas. Hopefully you can spend it in quality time <coughs> with your family and loved ones. Um, it's a time of year for that. But as you're spending time and looking forward to spending time with loved ones, don't forget those who are less fortunate uh, by giving to Shane Gives Thanks uh, Food Pantry. Uh, we always want to always remember them. Um, all the hard work done by the Council of Aging, uh, Meals on Wheels, Meals During the Week. Um, I also want to thank the police department and <coughs> the police union for a tremendous uh, Bill the Cruiser uh, drive that they had. Mm -hmm. Had a very good turnout there, uh, and they got an awful lot of toys and donations. So making sure that some less fortunate kids can have a Merry Christmas. And finally, Happy New Year. This is the season for a lot of gatherings <coughs> and parties. If you are going out and imbibing in some adult beverages, please use your head. We, this is not the time of year you want to find yourself, you know, hearing the police going to an accident or the fire department or the ambulance. Designated driver, if you're going to be drinking, make sure you have a designated designated driver to get you home and that's it from me on that just Merry Christmas and Happy New Year moving on chapter 61 a AD make peace portion on Wedham Road map 107 lot 1-4 do we have somebody here for that no we're good I, uh, I, in looking it over, I did have some questions just because I was a little confused between you had lot three, lot four, and then lot uh, 3A and 4A. And yeah. I, was, I, I think I understand what they were doing, but I, 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 I guess we'll have to rely on the faith of the fact that our planning director signed off on this. And it, They're creating two single-family lots. Is that what the, the intent 60, was? 60,000 square feet, but they're leaving themselves an entrance to the back 500 acres. Because I noticed on one of them, there's a lot of wetlands on uh, one of the properties. Well, a lot has to be at least 70% upland, so. Really? That much? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. And again, I know sometimes those mm -hmm. plot plans aren't to scale, necessarily, right. uh, the way they're drawn up. But you, yeah, you, so you, you look at all, you're comfortable with it, Sarah? Well, I, I just look, read the plans. Okay. You know, I, don't, I don't actually know the site, mm -hmm. but that would be a determination the Conservation Commission would have to okay. figure out. But uh, presumably, I mean, Rich Serkey is taking care of this for the mm -hmm. for the seller. He kind of knows what he's doing. <clears throat> what he's doing, so I, I'm pretty sure he didn't cut out a lot that was less than seventy percent up. <sighs> okay, okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve them. Motion to exercise first right of refusal. Yeah, I'll make a motion to exercise the first right of refusal. Second. Okay, we had motion and seconded. Further discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. All right. 2018 license renewals for approval. The common particular liquor, entertainment, automatic amusement, class one, two, three, and commercial garages. And um, this has been po these. This list has been posted on our website. Correct. So anybody that wants to look at these and see who's on them can go ahead. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve these licenses uh, with the exception of those indicating uh, taxes are due and no. that those I not be approved until those taxes are paid in full. Or a payment. Yeah, can we have contingent so, on? Yeah, contingent on instead of except for. Contingent upon uh, payment of taxes. Payment of taxes. You said accept. You, you, you yeah, vote it, all it, of them, it, but really it really should be contingent on payment <coughs> or, or a plan set up with the treasurer collector. You have to approve them all. What yep. Sarah said. Okay. <laughs> and do I have a second of what Sarah said? Second. second. You can't second your own thing. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> I'll second it. Then. Second. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, discussion. Anybody? Because I do. I have, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really concerned. Uh, a couple of our class twos, 
mm -hmm. are arrears and taxes, and one is really in arrear of taxes. Um, have we not heard from them for a couple of years? Is that what's going on here? Do we know? Um, well, we do. We normally every year tie approval yeah. to paying taxes, yeah, so right. there we'll shouldn't have, have been anything left over from last year, or else they shouldn't have got their license last year. Well, they may not have. We will look oh. into those again. Yeah. Uh, they, everyone is charged 14% interest if they haven't paid their taxes. Okay. Bottom line is they won't get their license until they settle the taxes. But I think it, it, I think it's important for the town to know that the vast majority of the people that have been applied that have applied for the licenses, like 99.9%, yeah, percent, yes, they're paid in full. Right. They're doing their civic duty and the, the responsible thing and paying the fees. Um, so to only have two out of this whole list, that's actually not a bad thing, but um, those two just won't get their license then. All right. And, and Mr. Have, Chairman, they're charged 14% interest if they're late. If they're late, 14%. Yes. All right. All those in favor of approving these licenses contingent upon pay, full payment of taxes or setting up an, a payment plan with the Treasurer's Department and paying into those payment plans, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. And since my computer decided to reboot itself now. <laughs> uh, approval to put forth vacancies on April 28, 2018 annual town election ballot, a library trustees and redevelopment authority. Mr. Milanowski. Well, uh, yes, these are to fill uh, vacancies, um, not vacancies, but um, these are positions that uh, need to go on their midterm, if you will. So the bo so you need to make a vote on this so that the clerk can start to prepare the ballot. One would be um, the position that Mr. Sinclair filled on the RDA, oh, yep. and we have the same situation on the library trustees. We had somebody resign on the library trustee, yes. Oh. Uh, Mr. Sinclair's would be just for a one-year term, I believe. Because he was filling out this and it had one more year to go before it. That would be correct. Okay. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of uh, going ahead and uh, placing two positions uh, on the annual town election, library trustees and Re redevelopment authority, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 5-0. Moving on to minutes licenses, Jadia. Minutes for 11-28-17. Pleasure of the board. Um, Mr. Chair, I, I realized too late that there are some changes that, uh, in something that I had said during the Board of Selectmen comment period, and I hadn't had time to tell the ladies in the office. Can we postpone it? Um, I, I'll make a motion. We table the minutes until our next meeting. Thank you. I appreciate it. Do I hear a second? Sure. Second. Second in the discussion. I'll Those in favor of tabling, signify by saying aye. 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 <coughs> All right. <coughs> Table to the next meeting. Not a problem. All right. One day special licenses. Uh, Spark Carver Sportsman's Club annual game supper for January 26th of 2018, uh, noon to midnight. And that's uh, an alcohol license, correct? Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming so. One day, yes. yes. One day alcohol. Yeah. Because Make a motion my, to approve. Second. Motion made second. And further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none. Those in favor of approving, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Uh, Sampson's Pond parking permit requests. We have uh, three different um, fishing clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, date in July, uh, July 29th. May 20th and May 12th, all in 2018. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, just a point of clarification. This is just for parking permits, because I know we tabled the discussion of the actual tournaments because Mr. Robinson ha had some concerns about making sure that the participants had clean boats and, and so forth before uh, entering. And so I just want to make sure that we're not approving the tournaments here. We're just approving parking permits, and they'll have to re come up with the uh, request to be to have hold the tournaments at a later time. 
Uh, just wondering if there's a distinction here. Did, didn't you speak on that last time? Yeah, I did. I think yeah. we just moved the, the vote to this, um, to this meeting. I think Dave found All right. out. Well, it, I mean, it, was it, I, don't, I don't know I don't if it's parking. parking. I think this is for the tournament. Okay, it, it's, it's for the tournament. It's a parking permit request. Yeah, so I know. Just, yeah. 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 Didn't you find there was no issue really with... <coughs> yeah, the boats. boats weren't bringing the, yeah. the problem in. He did his research. Yeah. All right, I, I just want to be clear that this, so this is actually to also yes. allow the tournaments as well. Correct. That's yes. All I just yep. point of nope. clarification. I, not that's trying to extend the meeting, Mr. Chairman. Oh, yeah, you are, but that's all right. <laughs> Make a motion to approve then. We could approve all three. All that, oh, for, this is for all three, sir. Second. I'll Your second motion to uh, second that. So you're seconding Helen the second. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. I did. <laughs> Again, I wasn't listening. Ed, any I... further discussion before this goes any further downhill? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of approving these three requests, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, 5 0. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for January 16th, with another one on February 6th. Do we have a need to go into executive session tonight? Briefly. Um, Mr. Chairman, just to, on, on the next dates, if we're talking about having the uh, department heads in, uh, um, one meeting in January and one meeting in February, is that going to be sufficient? No, I anticipate we'll have more meetings in February. We just haven't scheduled them. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Just one yeah, I don't have a problem with the one January, but yeah, we're going to need at least two, if not three, in February. Okay, thank you. Make a motion to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining negotiations with unions. Police, in this case, that may have a detrimental effect in the bargaining position of the town if held in open session, and to reconvene an open session for the purpose of adjournment. Second. Second. Okay, this will require a roll call vote. Wait a minute. Hold on one second. Sarah, given her past practices, probably doesn't want to participate. Is in this the... just police? That is correct. Is it health insurance? Okay. That's an element of it, yes, major element of it. Is it. Does it concern retirees? It has health. You've recused yourself from health on all issues. Before. Only when they've been bundled with retire employees and retirees. Uh, that is correct. This is active and retirees. Okay. All right. I'm going to recuse myself then. Okay. Have a nice time. All right. Thank you very much. Merry Bye. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Thank and uh, hope you feel better. I feel better. I'm I'm better. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Robertson. Dave says yes. Alan Dunham says yes. Helen Maroney says aye. Ron Clark says aye. All right. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. And please don't put in the, the almost clown word. <laughs>